obviously um, mothers wanted the best for their children then in the same way mothers want the best for their children now. She arranged for him to be married to Elizabeth of York, the, da- the daughter of Edward IV, uh, who was regarded by many people as, as, the, as the right heir um, to the throne anyway, her only problem being, unfortunately, in most people's eyes, her gender. The notion that, and we see this in fiction quite a lot, of course, that Margaret always believed her son would begin always hoped for that and always worked for that really is without evidence. Uh, We are still locked down in the UK, hence my lockdown beard. Not really a beard, I just haven't shaved for a few days. Um, But I knew that you would all forgive my sloppiness. So here I am talking to you today about uh, Lady Margaret Beaufort, mother of King Henry VII, one of my favourite topics of conversation because she's one of my favourite figures from medieval and Tudor history. And today I wanted to talk about the off-claimed remark uh, that we hear I'll see on social media that um, Lady Margaret um, either fought her whole life uh, to see her son, the future Henry VII, become King of England, or indeed um, uh, believed, even if she perhaps didn't fight for it, she believed or hoped, prayed that he would one day um, become King of England. And I understand why people get quite fixated on that for two reasons. One is because he did become King of England, Henry VII, Henry Tudor, against, frankly, all the odds. Um, So perhaps it it, it is conceivable to think that it would have been somebody's life's work and and why not a mother who obviously um, mothers wanted the best for their children then in the same way mothers want the best for their children now. Um, And, of course, we have also... um, well, not we, but the the Tudor dynasty, Henry Tudor, has Margaret Beaufort to thank for uh, the fact that he did become king in many ways. She did work to keep him safe in his uh, early years and to protect him uh, when things were tough, when he was a potential enemy of the king. And then when she did sense an opportunity for him in the reign of Richard III when it already became apparent to most people that the princes in the tower were almost certainly dead and uh, Richard III's government seemed unstable. As a result, Margaret sensed an opportunity for her son. She arranged for him to be married to Elizabeth of York, the the daughter of Edward IV, uh, who was regarded by many people as, as as the right heir Um, to the throne anyway her only problem being unfortunately in most people's eyes her gender Uh, Margaret um, was was instrumental in arranging that marriage which gave her son's bid for the throne um, credibility and she helped to attract um, early supporters to his cause so she certainly did work in her son's interest however the notion that, and we see this in fiction quite a lot, of course, that Margaret always believed her son would be king, always hoped for that and always worked for that, really is without evidence. And not only is it unevidenced, and to be fair, we can't evidence many of the inner feelings of the people that we're talking about, but we do our best to make make a good guess. But it's actually highly unlikely um, that Margaret would ever have thought like that. And here's three basic reasons why. The first reason is that Margaret herself, as a young girl, would almost certainly have known that the notion that she was in line to the throne in any significant way was dismissed by a Lancastrian parliament in 1449. Um, poor old Margaret, as many of you will know, um, didn't really have a father. He died before she was one years old. And she was a wealthy heiress. And she was put into the charge of a very powerful match. Now, the Duke of Suffolk was in a bit of a fix because he was a duke. Um, he, he kind of made himself a duke because he was basically running the government at this stage. But he didn't have the money um, of a duke. I think studies have estimated that he had around £600 a year from his lands, which really isn't quite enough um, to sustain the dignity of a duke, you know, to kit out a duke and, and let the duke live in the sort of style and be perceived as living in the kind of style that a duke perhaps 
ought. So, um, he decided to marry Margaret to his own son, um, and then his his son would ultimately um, get access to Margaret's substantial income, lands, and wealth. And Margaret had a fortune of about a thousand pound a year, which was was a, was a lot. It was a huge fortune, and added to the money that the um, Suffolks would already have, that would have been enough um, to 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 make a good fist at living the kind of life that a duke should live. So he married Margaret um, to his son. And that, even though they were only children, so actually the marriage that took place wouldn't have been fully legally binding because it was made when they were under the age of 12. But it, but no doubt the plan would have been to have rectified that as they um, got older. However, the Duke of Suffolk had a number of enemies. He was basically trying to hold the government together when, it, as it was becoming clear that Henry VI was not a functioning king. And many people chose to take all of this out on the Duke of Suffolk, which was probably a bit unfair because they'd probably sort of all been in on the fact that they knew Suffolk was, was holding everything together, really. But they decided to... Um, stave off their own popularity, the other nobles, by blaming Suffolk for what was going wrong. So they wanted him dead, effectively. So they charged him with a number of things. And one was they argued he was plotting to overthrow the king and put his own son on the throne and base his son's claim to the throne on the fact he was married to Margaret, which Parliament was saying the Duke of Suffolk was using uh, to claim and pretend that Margaret was next in line to the throne after the then childless um, Henry VI. So the Duke of Suffolk almost certainly was not thinking this and in fact he stringently um, denied it. He said it would go beyond the, 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 the rules of law and reason to assume that Margaret was anyway next in line. So this whole episode has led people to think, well, maybe Margaret was considered. Henry VI at this point had no children. Maybe Margaret was considered the heiress to the throne, particularly by those who didn't favour the candidacy of the Duke of York, who was probably more widely considered to be the Plantagenet heir to the throne. The next in the male line, he also arguably had a better claim in the female line, but that's a whole different discussion. I've got separate videos on that. Maybe they considered Margaret as a candidate. Well, I think that's a misreading of this situation. What Parliament were trying to do was really show how preposterous the Duke of Suffolk was being and how he would do anything to try and grasp power. And they were making a very tenuous claim. But by accusing him of claiming and pretending that Margaret was next in line, they were actually saying that they didn't think she had any uh, substantial claim to the throne whatsoever. She was a woman, which wouldn't have helped her cause. And the, her, her family, the Beaufort family, though had been made legitimate, um, their, their kinsman, Henry IV, the first Lancastrian king, had made it clear that he didn't feel they should be able to ever inherit the crown. So even though that was of dubious legality, it didn't go through Parliament, it is likely that the Beauforts were not widely seen as potential successors to the crown. So why on earth would Margaret, when she gave birth to Henry, um, less than 10 years later why on earth would she think that he had any chance of being king by this point henry the sixth had had a son of his own so there wasn't this sort of gulf in the succession that there had been um 10 years before when margaret's name had been mentioned and then dismissed in terms of the uh, succession so it seems ludicrous that unless she was deluded and nothing about margaret's character suggests she was deluded at all she seems to be sharp shrewd um and clever um nothing was it, nothing uh, suggests that she would have considered him an heir to the throne because it just wouldn't have made any sense when Henry was born. The second reason uh, why I really don't think uh, Margaret would have considered Henry a contender for the throne is that she was loyal to the House of Lancaster. We do not know Margaret's inner feelings during the Wars of the Roses. We do not know exactly um, what she thought of everything that was going on or who she wanted to be king. But we do know, A, that the Beaufort family, her family, were intrinsically involved in the Lancastrian cause. They were their kinsmen. They had been behind the scenes making the reign of Henry VI happen and they had been the staunchest defenders of Henry VI and Lancastrian kingship. Um, <laughs> arguably, they'd also been a cause of some of the problems, but again, that's a different debate and a different video. So Margaret um, 
we don't like I say we don't know exactly what she thought but of course her sympathies were likely to be the same place that her Beaufort um, cousins uh, and uncles and relatives were um, and we know that in later life when Margaret was in a position of power she did everything she could to ensure that the memory of Henry the Sixth was celebrated she met him as a young girl it's likely his kindness and his piety made a positive impression on her and she seems to have taken that into her old age by campaigning to try and have him made a saint um, which was ultimately unsuccessful but something that she was very invested in it, she was loyal to Henry VI it is likely that loyalty transferred to his son and she would never have considered her own son a competitor to Henry VI or to Henry VI's son But what then post-1471, when Lancastrian, the main Lancastrian line has been extinguished, so has most of the Beaufort line. Really, the only Lancastrian heirs are Margaret and her boy, Henry, Henry Tudor, Henry of Richmond, who had had to flee to France. Probably not because he was considered a rival throne, but just because Jasper Tudor, his uncle, was considered a, a thorn in the side of the Yorkist regime, a troublemaker, and Henry, no doubt, could be could be seen as one by association, particularly as he grew older. And that's why they felt under threat um, from the Yorkists. So there's a possibility that Henry's Lancastrian, his Beaufort blood, may, may have been something that... Um, King Edward IV looked on as, as something he wanted to cleanse the realm of. However, even at this point, it does not seem that Margaret could have in any way been working or manoeuvring for her son to become king. Uh, Yorkist kingship was now established. Margaret seems to have made her peace with it. I mean, to be fair, she she, she had earlier. Um, Henry, Edward IV was her cousin too. Um, she married closer to the York uh, court and she seems to have tried to establish herself um, as a player in that world. And it seems to have worked. Uh, she was involved in some big occasions. She seems to have won everybody's trust. If she hadn't had it before, we have no real evidence that she hadn't, but she may not have um, in the first half of Edward the fourth reign. There may have been some suspicion over her and her then husband, Henry um, Stafford, but that seems to have gone. And there seems to have been reconciliation all round in the second uh, half of Edward the Fourth's reign. Margaret is accepted, and what she seems to be working toward is to see her son restored to the title of Earl of Richmond, um, which he'd been loosely called for a number of years, but technically lost quite soon after the Yorkist King Edward the Fourth came in, and to see him welcomed back in England. And furthermore. It looked like she was on the verge of that happening. Had Edward IV not suddenly died uh, when he did in 1483, Henry would almost certainly have been invited back to England, given the title Earl of Richmond, although probably not given any major estate, probably just some of the lands, and which really Margaret should have inherited from her mother would have gone straight to Henry. But of course, Henry was always due to become a more significant landowner. Um, when his mother eventually uh, died and he would have inherited her estate, which would have been more a substantial enough income uh, for an earl to have enjoyed. Margaret uh, didn't, I don't believe, uh, hold out hopes for her son to become king. I don't believe that she particularly wanted her son to become king. She was a pragmatist. She knew that being king was a pretty tough job. It's a myth that all the nobility were vying to want to have kingship. They wanted power. Yes, they did. They wanted land. Yes, they did. They wanted wealth. Yes, they did. But they didn't necessarily want uh, the kingship. They didn't want the top job. They were aware of the problems that it came with, particularly in a Wars of the Roses era, a world where it showed that being king was not necessarily a safe thing to be at all. Because of an unpredictable twist of events in 1483, Margaret started to see that there was an opportunity for her son. She didn't want kingship per se. What she wanted was success for her son, prosperity for her son, security for her son, and no doubt for herself as well. And because of those twists and turns of 1483, the crown unexpectedly became their best chance for both. And that's when Margaret believed her son could become king and set about making to work it a reality. Thank you, everyone. It's been great to speak to you. Speak to you again soon. Leave me some comments and take care.